Hello, this is an introduction to our course on economic, the economics and financial analysis of solar power, or economic and financial analysis. And the first thing I'm going to do is walk through so you can really see the points, some, see some of the main points we're going to discuss in the next 16 different uh, 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 sections. Some of them might be combined. And each section should take, there'll be a video of, uh, uh, of hopefully about one half of an hour, maybe a little bit longer on each section. Now I'm going to begin by just discussing some very, very high level technical aspects of solar power just a tiny little bit how it works how the polysilicon works how the we make a panel and so forth and then i'm going to move in to really the the the, the key point and that is the economic the the revolution in solar power it when i started working and teaching uh, uh, solar power economics and working on financial analysis and financial models you know there was a saying they said oh you use cold uh, little cold, cold things stones or whatever to make coal power you put natural gas in a pipeline and that's how you make electric power from natural gas and when it comes to solar power it's made from subsidies government subsidies and of course the people would kind of sneer and laugh at that and now that's totally and completely changed and the economics have so dramatically changed it's le led to a revolution in a whole lot of other things so we're going to go through that and we're going to first begin by looking at the key driving points behind why behind the solar power revolution and the first one in in, in point number four is the capital cost and the Absolutely. I, I think even when you look at th something like semiconductors, you wouldn't see the kind of dramatic cost change uh, 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 that's occurred in the capital cost of, of uh, solar power. But that's not the only part. You also have to understand the economics, uh, to understand the economics, what the cost of operation and maintenance is and how that's affected by inflation and degradation. And finally, on, 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 on moving down to point number six, resource analysis for, for bankers and, 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 and people who looked at the risks of solar power. This was something new. Heretofore, you didn't have to estimate anything like the sunlight and estimate how much power you're going to get and what happens if there are clouds and what happens if you put different kinds of... Uh, uh, solar power equipment uh, uh, in and we'll talk about without we'll, we'll get into a case study and talk about things like the performance ratio the objective is that you can understand this and not be afraid to look at something like a pv cyst run and understand how to interpret that and understand how those inputs go into the uh, 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 go into the financial analysis. And then in point number seven, we're going to go through the calculation of the levelized cost of energy, and we could call it levelized cost of electricity, and we can get into so, some debates, but putting the capital cost, operating cost, resource analysis, and the cost of capital into a a framework by which you can compute the LC, the levelized cost of E, energy or electricity or whatever you want to uh, call it. There's actually a key, key distinction there. Okay, and we'll take away any mysterious. You can, you know, get hundreds of thousands of reports saying here's the LCOE for solar and 
we want to make absolutely sure that you can compute it. And the cost of capital is the final driver that's absolutely essential. And we'll show you how to integrate that with a project finance analysis and a more corporate analysis where you hold the capital structure constant. Okay, and we'll put the we'll put everything together by computing after tax carrying charges and show you that you can either use a, a weighted average after tax cost of capital or an after tax required project IRR and a project framework to get the LCOE. Then once we have that, we'll see, well, how do we really use the LCOE? How do we compare something that you can control, a dispatchable project with something that you can't quite control and that might be suddenly fluctuating with 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 a, a cloud and so forth how do you really compare the short run and the long run marginal cost of solar power well of other uh, resources with with solar power should you compare it with a battery that you you use for ancillary services should you only compare the cost of natural gas and so on and so forth all right then we'll move in to some risk analysis and the first thing we'll do is show you how bankers or credit analysis and uh, uh, investors and equity investors look at some of the risks including what could happen if there's a different level of degradation o m what happens if the inverter replacement is is a little bit different what happens if you have a corporate PPA and you have some merchant price risk and finally it's the resource analysis and the resource analysis is so important that in point number 11 we'll go through and take any intimidation you have about statistical analysis and you think oh this is some kind of mystery coming up with p50 p90 and p95 we'll see that everybody kind of uses a similar kind of uh, 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 gets a similar number in the end, but what is really behind the statistic and analysis will even go through some, some fundamental statistics like mean squared error and take any, any intimidation that you might have about these things away. You don't have to become a statistical expert, but understanding what it, what, what really happens with the, 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 uh, resource analysis and what's behind that is important in 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 point number 12 we're going to go through a little bit more project finance analysis and talk about the difference between regular old corporate analysis where they use something called whack i call whack wait what a complete crap or what a crop of crap something like that because in project finance, the risk changes so dramatically from when you're developing a project and you have, oh, what the chances of that really uh, uh, actually uh, uh, going ahead and working well and becoming a boring project. What you want is you, you want to go from a very risky development project to a very boring uh, 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 completed project where all you have to worry about is the sun coming up and down. And that dramatically changes the economic and, and financial analysis. And in point number 13, we'll talk about how the debt sizing, which is so important in coming up with the cost of capital, uh, is driven by these, this resource analysis. And you have a DSCR for P50 and P90. And please don't worry. For one instant, if you don't, if I'm throwing terms at you like DSCR and you, you're, you're just being introduced to this whole business and you don't know exactly what they mean, we're going to take any kind of a, a, a mystery around this away and you're actually at an advantage because people throw away, throw, throw away, throw around terms so, so much. And then we'll talk more specifically about the development phase and these things called development premiums and you see you see that and instead of just saying ah here's what they have they have a five percent development premium they have eight percent they have twenty percent i have seen twenty percent what's the economic analysis behind these and how do these affect 
different investors in the, 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 the credit analysis of these things. So we're going from the very beginning, the very kind of fundamentals, and we're working our way down through some real nuanced kind of issues. And then we'll talk about some more nuanced issues, which is how do we, how do the returns for the investors and the risks to the banks and the prices to consumers, how are they affected by if you can refinance a project as it becomes more boring, as you can sell a solar project to an insurance company, as you have finance a project with something called an equity bridge loan or a, a, a something called a mini perm don't get worried about these terms and how do you really measure the IRR and all of these things and finally we'll talk about the what this revolution in solar power really means for some other issues like you can use now solar power to produce hydrogen and maybe make green hydrogen Maybe it's not quite competitive, but it's going to get close. What happens if we can use storage? Can we really use storage and get solar power to, to so, so, so that our children in, in, in a village in Africa can read at night? These are exciting issues. Should we uh, uh, charge our electric vehicles when we have something called a duck curve from the evening? And uh, uh, how should how do these corporate PPAs work when Google or one of these big companies with these data centers when they want to finance when they want to show that they have green energy how do they actually work and how do they affect all the risks and the financing so we're going through all of these kind of issues and then what one of the things that I hope you can really get from these this class is not only the most important thing the ability to really understand this all the way from the bottom up, but also to use a series of tools. We'll have a little program that allows you to update the cost of modules, which have changed, uh, changed so dramatically over the last few years. We'll have a show you some tools where you can automatically look at the variation in the costs and 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 read and, and 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 get some of the data and interpret some of the data from this wonderful website made by the EU we'll talk about the we'll, we'll provide the tools and some Monte Carlo don't be intimidated by this that demonstrates how some of the statistical work analysis works we'll have some database of actual solar production so you can see how much it varies from, from uh, year to year. We'll have some performance ratio analysis. We're going to give you some financial models with some of these difficult, horrible things about circular references resolved. We'll give you some databases on that you can automatically update and get the cost of debt uh, uh, analysis. We'll give you some levelized cost of electricity tools. We're going to go through how to compute that, and then you can just press a button, and you don't have to go to some Lazard website and say, ah, how do, how do they come up with this number? You can do it all, all yourself, and we'll also give you some merchant uh, uh, power databases so you can really evaluate the cost of solar power to other things. So we're going to... Part of the, the main thing, again, I'm repeating myself, sorry about that, but the class is about teaching you from the ground up, but also providing you some tools, and we'll have little videos that explain how to use these uh, tools, and we'll make sure that you can be so comfortable with these tools that we'll give you a little self-evaluation. I'm not going to call it a quiz or a test or anything else. We'll make sure that you can use some of these things and really do the analysis yourself okay and i'm going to stop this video and then we'll go into session number one